Um, brief introduction of yourself. I mean, I know you. It's it's so, but I would request briefly summarize it. Take some uh, even as a young child, mm -hmm. I wanted to be a doctor. My family always supported that idea. As I grew up, I heard my father saying that I must go to America, even if it is for a brief period of time. He was very impressed by the technological advancement of this country. He did research for about a year in the in University of Berkeley. At that time, he discovered that grapefruit has beta carotene in it. Listening to father, it really sank in my mind that America is the place to go and learn. But after coming here, I realized it is learning no question one of the best places particularly the field that i was interested in psychiatry pakistan did not have much to offer at all we used to get one lecture in one whole year last year of our medical school training so that was the beginning and the end of our training but uh, when i came here I was also concerned about things which were very, very different culturally. And at one point, I used to think that after getting all the training, I must make every effort to go back. But then I started realizing that this country, in many ways, attracts people and they almost fall into a trap. Because as I was finishing my training, I started getting so many offers. There were companies who were offering me big time loans. They were willing to establish office for me. They were willing to loan money for home. And all the friends who were here ahead of me they convinced me that I'm wasting money on rentals and that it is better to own a home. And pretty soon I learned that having your own home was an American dream. So I pursued that. And further along that we went as a family, more I realized it would be extremely difficult to leave this country. So, uh, sorry to interrupt, mm -hmm. which year you were here? When you first came yeah, I came, actually, it is very interesting that I landed on this land of opportunity on my 30th birthday, October 25th, 75. And initially, for a few months, I stayed by, with my brother in Baltimore area, and then I got my first job in Philadelphia. And as a family, we lived there for a few years. And then we went to South Jersey. And from South Jersey, then when I started my practice, we moved to Delaware. And now since 1982, I have been practicing and living in this state. Wow, thank you so much for sharing all this. So your father was actually the person who inspired you. And he's the audio person that come out from for you. Absolutely. No right. question about it. Do you, do, you, do you want to share something of the, that he shared that day with me, the fruit, which he actually, you know, did with something very, he just really invented it, if it's not wrong to yes, say. Yes, yes. So do you want to share that? Yeah, Dan was uh, an international fame scientist who discovered many things. He was an agriculture scientist, but his experience was very broad based. His main Training and love was for horticulture sciences, which is fruits. And his first master's was also on mangoes. But then, at one point, he was professor of botany. At one point, he was fodder botanist. Then he took over as director agriculture of Punjab. And then, he, at one point, 
for many years. He was director soil fertility West Pakistan and his one of his last official positions was as director general agriculture research council of Pakistan. He retired from there but people like him never retire. After that for 25 years he was professor emeritus at University of Agriculture in Faisalabad. <coughs> When I came here, when I just uh, started thinking to, to write something about the Muslim community here, the people who were actually here abroad, so you were the person who was mentioned by Alfred. How did you start when you were here? Nothing was as established as it is now. How was the journey? How was? Do you want to share some experience? Oh, absolutely. The problems, the difficulties, the challenges. Well. Initially, when I came to this country, like many others, I wanted to go back. In the first few months, I would say even one year or so, I wanted to go back as a frustrated person. It was very hard, even being a doctor in those days, it was very hard to find the first job. Then the cultural challenges. The first year of life, when I was working in a hospital, 10, 12 days passed, I, I did not even know that it was Ramadan. And then, everywhere that I looked at, things were so different. I came to this country thinking that I knew English very well. But then, I faced the fact that the English that I knew was English from England and these people spoke English which was American so there was that accent issue there was they use many words with different meanings and there was one joke after the other that happened but it was all a learning experience at some point I realized that once I'm here I must benefit the best out of this land of opportunity as it is called and with that realization things started turning around actually for now more than a decade I have been saying that living here we people who came from other countries like Pakistan we have the best of the two words if we try to utilize it properly. By that I mean that we benefit from the latest advancements, the science, the other good things that America and Americans has to offer, which is sense of accountability, being helpful to each other, and taking things as a challenge like the best example would be, President Kennedy said, I want by certain years our scientists to land on moon. And since then I have seen many such situations where in America they took a challenge, they put all their efforts and energy and they were able to resolve those issues. Like someone who came from abroad said when I was in my homeland this is Dr. Zatuni who was recently head of the the research institute of America with a 17 billion dollar budget and he said that when he was in his homeland of Algeria, if he would come up with some new idea and would talk to his superiors, the answer would be why you want to do that. And he said the very first thing that I learned by coming to this country, when I presented similar ideas, they said why not? And that was the beginning of research for him. And as Muslims, we know that for hundreds of years, when Muslims paid attention to research efforts, they were the leaders in the world. 
And when they stopped that, they started going down. Actually, the history tells us that even after stopping the research efforts, particularly in basic sciences, the momentum that Muslims had achieved, it helped them keep going for another 50 years. Uh, after that, then they could not maintain that superiority that they once had. So, this realization, when people ask me, what is it that America has offered to you? What are you excited about this American culture? My answer is very simple. These people think. A few friends said, what do you mean by that? We think too. Oh, no, 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 no. The difference of thinking, the free thinking, the thinking the way Dr. Zaituni did, that why not? Meaning anything is possible. That environment, that freedom, to live in that environment, they, as they say, there is no limit. The sky is the only limit. Living here, we started realizing that. And the creativity that we can do in this environment, there is no end to it. Is that, I don't know, it's my feeling that I see a lot of pain in your eyes for the society you were actually originated. Absolutely, absolutely. When we came to Delaware, the first question for us was, where are we going to take our children for education, Islamic education? At that time, hardly anyone thought about full-time Islamic school. We were only thinking about Sunday school, as was already the tradition based on the church's education style. And we learned that in Goldie Beacom College, which is a business school in this area, that some students were getting some education. So right away we took our children and got involved. And at that time, I became the president of Islamic Society of Delaware, which really existed on paper because there was no building. We used to go to University of Delaware and other places to say our important prayers like Friday prayer or Eid prayers. So in that environment, the need to have a building of our own, a place of our own, where we could worship comfortably, became very immense. It became a passion. It, be it was a necessity. We felt, in a way, we had no choice. We had to do it. The question was how. The question was not why or when. The question was how. So we started making all the fundraising efforts. And when I was the president, we doubled those efforts. And then actually, one of the sisters in the community said, you can keep doing these efforts. It will only bring so much money till people actually see the mortar, the walls, and the land where construction is going on. And she was 100% correct. The moment we started the project, the way people started donating, it was just amazing. In those days, when there were only 30 or 40 active families, and we only had $80,000. Thinking about a project which could reach 350000 was like millions today. But with this feeling that we have no choice, it is almost like Tariq bin Ziyad saying, we have burned the boats. Now we have to put everything that we have. I still remember when I asked the Islamic Society board that the whole board becomes a fundraising committee. And every week, those 21 of us used to get together in a place. And there we used to update each other as to what 
one has done, what the other one has done, what an other person can do which would be more effective. Long story, but the short of it is, to our surprise, with all the blessings of God, all that money was raised within one, less than one year. And not only that, the construction